Hi, this is Michael Kennedy from Developmentor. In this screencast, we're going to talk about strongly typed razor views in ASP.NET MVC. And here I say we're going to be embracing the model in MVC because typically you take your model and you pass it to the view uh, from the controller. So we're going to be talking about how you do that. I have a little example for you here, so let's get started. First, you can see we have a sample application, and this is the home view. Uh, it's a kind of a bookstore type of thing. So here's a bunch of books. You can see a developer cat book for $15, an IT cat book for $11. We also have a message passed in from the home controller index action method here. Control on slash home slash index implicitly. Uh, so you can see there's several pieces of data, um, the message as well as the collection of books. And if I click on any book, I go to slash home slash book with an ID, and then it shows me the particular uh, book that I, I'm looking at. So you can see data is being passed to these views from the controller action and I pick the different books you see the different pieces of information passed. It. However when we peel back the covers and look at the source you'll see we're doing it wrong. You know, we're using just view data to pass this along which is an untyped unstructured way to uh, flow data between the controller and the view and while you can see it works it's suboptimal. So let's first look at this particular uh, controller action where we pass a particular book down to this view. So over here in Visual Studio, that would be the second method in this uh, view here. We have a book, uh, it takes the ID uh, off of the URL here, and we do a link query to pull out that individual book, and provided that we find it, we pull some information like its title and its price and its image, and we put that into the view bag. And I put a little note to say, don't do this, because what we really want to do is we want to have a strongly typed view uh, a view, not one just based on view bag, which is obviously a dynamic, untyped, unstructured way to do things. So before I change it, let's go look at this particular book view. You can see uh, in the view up here, we have no model declaration or anything like that, and we're just using view bag title, view bag image, things like that. Okay, so let's just change this. Let's say, all right, you said don't do this, don't do that. We have a book object, and in this case, all the information we need to pass to the view is actually contained within the book object, right? Book, title, price, and image URL. So we can pass this down to the view by saying simply view uh, of book, and we pass it to this view method, right? Now that's the controller side. On the view side, we need to tell the view, hey, you are a view, uh, a view that takes a book, right? And so what that under the covers actually creates is a view page of T where T is a book. But the way you'll see it written is you'll say model, and then you say the name book. All right, now there's no book up here, obviously, but uh, we can fully qualify it, and then we have a, a declaration for book. And once we have that, we can come down here and refer to the underlying model properties. So you just say capital model dot, and then this time it's a particular book. So ID, image, URL, and so on. So we had here, we had the title. This one, we just have model dot image URL. All right. And again, we'll have a model that price. But now the benefit is, of course, you get one IntelliSense, right? If your bag has no IntelliSense. And you hover over these, you know, it's a string title, string image, and uh, double price. All right, so let me just run this here, recompile and run it. So wait for it to wake up. So now when I click on this, we're going to go to the controller, it's going to create the book, pass the book directly to the view. The view is going to use it to turn it into, well, what well, looks like basically the same thing. But we have much more maintainable code. If you look at it, it's very discoverable. Here we are down in the book and you just say model dot, you know exactly what you're working with. If we go over to this book class and we do a refactor rename on title uh, with something like resharper, that will also show up here. So that's great. We can also do that for the index view. You can see over in the index view, that we're actually using the view bag to stash a list of books. And this gets a little more complicated. If all we were passing was the collection of books, well, it's simple enough to say we just pass this book collection and our model was inumable book, we're all set. However, we want to pass two pieces of information. One, the set of books. The other is this message. We could do one of two things here. We could simply say, all right, well, let's just pass the books as the model and still use the view bag to carry the message. That's what some people might do. Another op option is to create a particular model that's tied directly to this view whose purpose is just to hold the data that the index view needs. And these are often referred to as view models. So I'm going to go down that path just to show you an example. And we often put those into a folder called 
not the models folder, but the view models folder. And in here, let's create a model called um, um, book listing view model. We'll call it that. For now we could also call it the index view model or something like that. And it's going to have two properties. The easiest way to set them up is to do this. So let's create a view model. New it up. We'll say view model dot uh, message equals this. And you can see ReSharper is going crazy saying such a thing doesn't exist. It's fine, I'll go in a moment. Let me say um, books equals uh, that right there. Okay. And then let's say we're going to pass the whole. We'll use Visual Studio to generate these properties. And we'll go look at them really quickly. See now we have a string message and an iron numerable of book. And we can import that namespace like so. Okay, so this is all well and good, and we have to go tell our uh, thing of our index view that the model is um, book listing view model, like so. And we could either import the namespace or just use the full name. So down here we don't need this stuff about view bag. Down here we don't need view bag dot message. We'll say of course model dot, and we should have message. There it is. And down here when we're looping through, we don't have books. We have model dot, and we have books and message. This part of course we're going to use books. Simple we'll recompile refresh should bring this back. Uh, let's go back to the home view here. And again, nothing should have changed. It should be exactly the same. So here we've, we're passing in the message and we're passing in the books, but things are much more maintainable. Now, that pretty much wraps it up for passing data to views, but let me just show you a few techniques that you need to know about. Imagine we have down here another uh, action for which we just created it. We don't yet have the view. You can see down in the home folder there's books and index, but there's no um, buybook.cshtml file. So I want to create a strongly typed um, view based on this action. So what you do is you right click, it's red because it's resharper by the way down here, you right click anywhere inside the method and you say add view. You make sure you've compiled the project before you do this or this part won't work. Uh, typically taking the default name up here is right. We want to create a strongly typed view and there's a bit of a delay as it enumerates all the types and I can say book. Right. So it's going to say a book and I could choose what I want to do here. I could have a detailed view for the buying the book. I could have a list of books. I could have the ability to create a book. So let's just say details really quick. And we don't want to reference script libraries. That's uh, done somewhere else. Okay, so we'll create this. And you can see it generated a, um, a uh, set of items, right? Uh, basically like a table using divs for the price, the title, and so on. It gives us some actions to get back here. And of course, we don't have an edit action, so let me remove that. So let's just run this over here. And if we go down to one of these books and we say I want to go to buy book and pass in that ID, you can see it's passing in all this information here, right? Image URL, price, title. Of course, our controller, we didn't actually pass that information along, I'm sure. So what we need to do is pass a book here. Sorry. So if we go refresh it, you should see the values are being passed down as well. And there they are. They're not formatted the way you'd like, so this isn't um, super great, uh, this sort of scaffolding type of view. But if you're new to MVC, it does give you a little bit of uh, help on, on structuring, right? It does this and so on. But you can just go and edit however you like. Come back and refresh it. And of course, there's our picture. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for the time.